Picture this, it's a cozy evening, the room bathed in the warm glow of a vintage lamp. You're settled comfortably in your favorite armchair, a bowl of popcorn in your lap, and an air of anticipation fills the room. The year is 1942, and on that flickering black and white screen, you're about to embark on a cinematic journey unlike any other. The movie that's about to unfold before your eyes is none other than Woman of the Year. As the opening credits roll, you find yourself drawn into a world where sharp wit, undeniable chemistry, and an ever-evolving battle of the sexes take center stage. Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy, two Hollywood legends, come to life as Tess Harding and Sam Craig, characters who are as different as night and day. It's a whirlwind romance that unfolds against the backdrop of journalistic ambition and personal growth, and you can't help but be captivated. Perhaps you recall the first time you watched Tess attempt to cook breakfast with comedic calamity, or the moment when Sam's exasperation with her unflinching dedication to her career turns into a touching realization. These are the moments that make Woman of the Year an unforgettable classic, etching its way into your heart and memory. Now, let's dive a little deeper into this cinematic gem, uncovering some random facts about the show that you might not know. From behind-the-scenes anecdotes to the enduring legacy of Hepburn, and traces on screen chemistry well unravel the layers of this remarkable film that has left an indelible mark on cinematic history. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of Woman of the Year. Hit ready for a journey that's as enchanting as it is enlightening, and discover what makes this timeless classic a beloved piece of cinematic art. In 1942, the movie Woman of the Year made headlines not just for its on-screen chemistry, but also for the behind-the-scenes love story that developed. Catherine Hepburn, standing at 59, and Spencer Tracy, just a tad taller at 510, were an iconic Hollywood duo. Reportedly, Hepburn's first words to Tracy were, Mr. Tracy, I believe I am too tall for you. Producer Joseph L. Mankiw quipped, Don't worry, honey. Hell soon cut you down to size. Despite warnings from her friends about Tracy's commitment to his wife, Hepburn fell in love with her co-star. Out of respect for Tracy's wife and her contributions to charitable work for the deaf, the romance remained out of the public eye. Hepburn, a close friend of George Cukor and a frequent collaborator, initially wanted him to direct the film. However, for Tracy's comfort, she hired George Stevens, known for directing her in Alice Adams. Hepburn explained, I just thought he should have a big, manly man on his team, someone who could talk about baseball. Huker, later a good friend of Tracy, would go on to direct both actors in several successful films. Woman of the Year not only showcased the Hepburn-Tracy charm on screen, but also hinted at the off-screen chemistry that would define their relationship for years to come. This 1942 film became a stepping stone for one of Hollywood's most enduring love stories. In the 1942 movie Woman of the Year, an interesting anecdote involves the first scene shot, which was the character's first date in a bar. Catherine Hepburn, who played the lead role, was quite nervous during the scene and accidentally spilled her drink. However, her co-star Spencer Tracy didn't miss a beat. He calmly handed her a handkerchief and continued with the scene. Hepburn, ever the professional, decided to incorporate the mishap into her performance. As she tried to clean up the spill, the liquid eventually dripped through to the floor. In a bid to catch Tracy off guard, she even went under the table, but he stayed in character, keeping the cameras rolling throughout the entire incident. This behind-the-scenes story showcases the dedication of the two legendary actors, Hepburn and Tracy, to their craft, as they turned an unexpected mishap into a memorable moment on screen. It's worth noting that Hepburn and Tracy started production by addressing each other as Miss Hepburn and Mr. Tracy. However, within just a few days, they had become so comfortable working together that they switched to a first-name basis. Tracy, in moments of frustration, would sometimes refer to Hepburn as Shorty or simply as that woman. Additionally, during the making of Woman of the Year, Spencer Tracy was already living separately from his wife. He spent most of his time in his suite at the Beverly Hills Hotel, while his wife and children lived on a ranch in the San Fernando Valley. This personal aspect of his life was unfolding parallel to the on-screen chemistry between him and Catherine Hepburn, adding an intriguing layer to the movie's production. In summary, the 1942 film Woman of the Year not only delivered a compelling on-screen story, 
but also had its share of interesting off-screen moments. From Catherine Hepburn's nervous spill to the evolving dynamic between the iconic duo of Hepburn and Tracy, these details provide a deeper appreciation of the movie's production. In the opening montage of the 1942 movie Woman of the Year, viewers are presented with two side-by-side -side ads. One declares, Hitler can't win by Tess Harding, and the other boldly states, Yankees can't lose by Sam Craig. History would reveal that only Tess's prediction proved accurate. The Yankees did indeed reach the 1942 World Series, but they fell short, losing to the St. Louis Cardinals in five games. Additionally, the film includes a memorable line delivered by Spencer Tracy, who had previously used it in the 1939 movie Stanley and Livingstone, where he portrayed Henry M. Stanley. The iconic phrase, Dr. Livingstone, I presume, has since become widely quoted. Stanley was sent by a newspaper to locate David Livingstone in 1870, and he successfully found him in 1871 near the shores of Lake Tanganyika, marking the moment when he uttered this famous line. Moreover, Woman of the Year had a notable Broadway adaptation. The Broadway musical version premiered at the Palace Theatre on May 29, 1981, featuring Lauren Bacall and Harry Gardino in leading roles. This production ran for an impressive 770 performances and received nominations for the 1981 Tony Awards in the categories of Best Musical, Book, and Score. These details provide a glimpse into the historical and cultural significance of Woman of the Year and its enduring impact on both the world of cinema and Broadway. It remains a testament to the talents of its cast and the timeless appeal of its themes. In 1942, the movie Woman of the Year marked the beginning of a legendary on-screen partnership between Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. This film was the first of nine in which the iconic duo would star together. Tracy and Hepburn's chemistry on screen would go on to become one of the most celebrated partnerships in Hollywood history. One notable difference between the two stars was their approach to acting. Hepburn was known for her love of rehearsal and meticulous preparation, while Tracy preferred spontaneity and often delivered his best performance on the first take. Hepburn had to adapt to Tracy's style to maintain their on-screen compatibility. During the production of Woman of the Year, it became evident that Tracy and Hepburn were romantically involved off-screen. Normally, studio executives would try to suppress such relationships due to concerns about negative public reactions. However, in this case, they took a hands-off approach. Part of the reason was the discretion of the stars themselves, but another factor was Katherine Hepburn's role in helping Spencer Tracy with his alcoholism. When Tracy struggled with drinking, Hepburn would wait outside his hotel room until things calmed down before going in to help him sober up. This unique dynamic between them contributed to the studio's decision to let their relationship flourish. In conclusion, Woman of the Year not only kickstarted the Tracy Hepburn cinematic partnership, but also revealed a remarkable personal connection between the two stars that extended beyond the silver screen. Their on screen magic and their unique off screen bond continue to be remembered as a remarkable chapter in Hollywood history. As we draw the curtains on this cinematic journey through the remarkable filmography of 1942, we find ourselves at the intersection of love, ambition, and the ever-evolving dynamics of relationships. Woman of the Year stands as a timeless testament to the complexities of human connection, wrapped in the elegant aura of its era. In the luminous world of Katherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy, we witness the sparks of two distinct souls colliding, each a luminary in their own right. The clash of their worlds, the collision of their passions, and the orchestration of their hearts serve as an allegory for the intricate dance we all engage in when love finds its way into our lives. The film's portrayal of Tess and Sam's journey is a mirror to our own pursuits of love, success, and the delicate balance between them. Have you ever found yourself engrossed in the spirited debates of Tess and Sam as they grapple with personal and professional ambitions? Did their witty repartee and undeniable chemistry resonate with your own experiences of love's complexity? Woman of the Year invites us to reflect on the myriad ways we navigate our relationships with humor, intelligence, and the inescapable allure of our hearts. Now, it's your turn to step into the spotlight. We'd love to hear your thoughts and memories of this iconic film. What moments left an indelible mark on your heart? How did Woman of the Year weave its narrative into the fabric of your life? 
Share your insights and cherished memories with us, for it's in these stories that the true magic of cinema comes alive. Thank you for taking this nostalgic journey with us and for sharing your thoughts on Woman of the Year. Your connection with this cinematic gem is what keeps its legacy vibrant and enduring. Until our next rendezvous with the silver screen, remember that the threads of our lives are woven together with the stories we hold dear. Warmly, 